Hey guys, it's Sunday, and this is going to be the day I release my Sunday tutorials. Every Sunday I'll release a Flash tutorial, um, how to do Flash, because so many people have asked me, and I said I would, and my computer is actually good now, so I can pretty much draw stuff. So this will be the Sunday tutorial. I will draw something every Sunday, I will teach you a new thing every Sunday, but before we can get into really really advanced shit we need to like get the basic shit out because most people really don't even know how to use flash and I want to get like the easy shit out of the way so what we're gonna start with simply is we're gonna set our desktop or not our desktop but our fucking canvas our area we draw in this place basically <clears throat> what you do is this is what I do um, if anybody's wondering, I'm using Adobe Flash CS3. I do not know if it works the same for CS4 or 5, but I do know that it's pretty much the same for C, uh, for Flash 8, uh, Macromedia Flash Professional 8, pretty much. So if you have 8, then this will probably work for you as well. Basically, double click the 25 frames per second, which is what I have it set at. Now, when you first open Flash, you will obviously have 12 frames per second. That is pretty fucking slow, and it's not something I recommend using. Since I work in every other two frames, because uh, it's more smoother, and technically cartoon speed are 25 frames per second, so 25 frames per second is probably the best to use. Now, when I double-click 25 frames per second, I get the document properties window. Now, I can also open it in the windows down here in this property window, but it's uh, it's more convenient to just double-click the frames per second and bring this up. You can put a title description in here. Um, if you really want to put description, I've never done that. It's pointless. As for dimensions, I personally use 64 by 360. It's pretty much the best, in my opinion. That's um, when you upload it to YouTube, you can upload a high quality widescreen. This is probably the best setting to have it at. That's what they normally have widescreen and high setting for YouTube at. So it's pretty much what I use. So that said, I usually have 640 in width and 360 in height. That is 640 in width and 360 in height. As for, um, if you would like to set anything else, normally I think you'd start at like 550 by 440, I think. I think that's what it's, the default setting is at. Uh, here you can also change the background color. This, if I'll show you, change the color. If I press OK, this changes the canvas color. And if I had a VCAM, this would change the VCAM color. But we're not getting into VCAM shit yet. So I'm going to op open back up my properties window. I'm going to change it back to white because for now it's just going to be white. We're not going into too advanced shit. We're just going to learn the basics. Um, the frame rate, like I said, is 25 frames per second. You can change it easily. The ruler units, this just changes the units. I usually just use it pixels because I don't fucking want to mess with anything else, but you're welcome to. And make sure to click Make Default. What this does when you click this button is this makes the default for any time you open up a new document. So this will always be 640 by 360 with whatever frame rate you have and the background color. This will always be that. So it's best to just stick with what you got and make that default. Now that I have it set as default, we're going to learn the buttons. Now if you come over here, you have a mess of buttons. I know you can get more buttons and you some people have their things set out like this. But I personally like it all scrunched up in this like style right here. And to get that thing again, you simply click the two triangle things at the top of the fucking the flash thing, just below file. It's not that hard to find. It's it pretty much just does that. Now some key buttons to learn before we get into anything, which I'm going to write out. F4 takes away. This shit takes away all this. What I mean is, you press F4, everything goes away. Okay? These are important, so remember that. F4 takes away your workspace and leaves your canvas area to work in. When you come up to the layer 1, F5 inserts a frame, but it doesn't insert a keyframe. There's a big difference from inserting a keyframe and a frame. When you insert a frame, you literally stretch the frame out. So, like, um, if you drew a ball bouncing, and you insert a frame. If I was to put a, a clear frame over here and just make the ball come down here, you see how it's slow it is? That's because I just put a bunch of frames in front of it. Okay, so remember F4 removes your area, this workspace area. F5 stretches out the frame. Okay? 
in F6 inserts a keyframe. Now I have nothing drawn. I'm just going to scribble. So see, I'm pretty much inserting keyframes here. I can come in here and edit these frames and make them move, but I don't really want to do that right now. And F7 inserts a clear frame. So let's say I just fucking, I don't know, draw something really fast. Um, if I insert a clear frame, it clears it. And you see I have a clear frame. Those are really important to learn, and I recommend learning them immediately. F8 makes a symbol when you have something selected. So let's fucking make a th that, whatever the fuck that is. Select it, and press F8, and you get your convert symbol menu. There you can convert it to a symbol, a movie clip, or a button. It's uh, pretty nifty to learn everything I just said. So I'm going to go over it one more time. F4 stretches out your menu. F5 inserts a frame. Does insert a keyframe. Now I'm going to scribble something. F6 inserts a keyframe. F7 inserts a clear frame. Okay, these are important, so fucking learn them. Now that we've got the basic button things down that will make everything easier, uh, we're going to learn about the actual buttons over here, which we should have done. But whatever, I'm trying to get all the basics done in this one thing. So, here we have the selection tool. Basically what that does, if I was to draw a picture, um, a fucking... Uh, I'm going to draw a duck. the fuck do ducks look like? Um, fucking, yeah, it's a platypus uh, duck. I think that's what a platypus looks like. Whatever, you get the fucking idea. So I'm going to connect the lines so the coloring comes in. Keep in mind, I'm doing this like two seconds, so half-assed. Uh -huh. So I'm going to color this in shittily. Looks like dick. The fuck? Okay, here's my horrible duck fucking platypus. As you can see, if we use the main thing, this basically just selects one color. Now I know you can select more than one color, but I really don't know how to do that. So as of now, I only know that this selects one graphic. And you can take it out. Country press Control Z, bring it back in. Basically, I think you have 50 Control Zs you can do. You can press Control Z, or you can undo about 50 things, and you're pretty much fucked. Past that, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's more. You all have to try something out, scribble a bunch, then try it. But um, yeah, it just selects one color. That's pretty easy. The sub selection tool I don't really like because I don't use it. But this, basically, when you click this, is it selects everything and it makes your lines and you can stretch them out if you want to make your lines more thick this basically puts a, a point on every single time your lines curve which is happens a lot so I don't recommend using it but if you want to be more precise with your stuff then that's something you'd use it for um... this is a uh, what's this fucking button called? the pen tool? I never use a pen tool I, I, I guess if you're making something more precise but this, in my opinion, looks fucking retarded, and I'm not, this is dumb. So I don't use that. Uh, the text tool does what it says. You fucking, you type. Why the fuck is it so small? Well, whatever. You can change that in the properties. If you go down here at the bottom, you can change the properties of the text. You can make it bigger by doing this. Oh, you have to select it first. That's uh, pretty nifty, but I don't really use text a lot, so whatever. Um, the line tool is uh, good for making fucking... I guess if you make square backgrounds with no color, that's what I usually do. When I make my backgrounds, I use the line tool and the pencil tool. Because you can do a lot with it. You can just fucking you don't have to worry about that shit. There you go, color. Isn't it just amazing? I wasn't paying attention. The free transform tool is extremely important. Now, basically what the free transform tool does, I'm going to, fuck, I'm going to draw somebody. I'm going to draw an angry box thing.
looks pretty good. I think it looks amazing. Now, this fucking... Let me just color it. Yeah, it looks fucking amazing. What this does is this cre This is kind of like... um, You just sim simply click and drag. This selects basically your graphic that you can turn in. You press F8 and you can turn it into a symbol. You can move it. Um, you can pretty much do whatever you want with this uh, when you have it selected. But this only does it in square form. I don't think you can change it. No, you can't. You can't change it. Maybe you can find an extension that changes it to like circle or triangle. But as of now, it's pretty much just a square. And to do it, you do it like you play an RTS game. You just click and drag, and there you go. And you select an area. This lasso tool is a little different. Basically, if you draw, I'm gonna draw a snake. A worm, snake thing, thing. I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm drawing. That looks pretty good. Doesn't look like ass. Okay, uh, you lose the lasso tool, and this basically you can cut around it. I did it shittily, but whatever. I'm just trying to make a point, and you can fucking move it away. This selects. Uh, this basically is a free transform tool, so it's like this. Only you select what you want. So I guess technically what I said before was completely pointless. So you basically use the lasso tool, and it um, moves what you make, what shape you make. It takes. It doesn't matter as long as you collect it, connect it to the main point. And there you go. Um, I've got to say, once you have it selected, you can also. There's a lot you can do when you have it selected. Um, you can also do this, you can, you can bend it by selecting this area. When you select these points, you can stretch it out. Or you can press control and you can make it kind of like stick out weird. Kind of like some 3D almost. If you hold control and uh, stretch out on those things. Because it keeps one area in place. But that's basically what you can do with the free transform tool and the lasso tool. So there's, there's a lot you can do. These are important for like um, uh, turning and shit. Basically, what Flash is, what it really all comes down to, and what my senseless babbling is coming to a fucking, what I'm trying to say is, it's like an advanced form of MS Paint. It, that's really all it comes down to. It's just like MS Paint. It's just all these things you're used to in MS Paint. These are the fucking star tool. This is a, these are all from MS Paint. Uh, that's basically all it is. Uh, the pen tool, this is really important for shading. What I mean by that is, when you come over here to this picture, and let's say I want to shade this side of the box for some reason, I make a line, I make it out of the area so it's like fully connected. I come in here, uh, I'll take this, and there you go. Uh, I colored it. And then I can remove the color like that. But we're not going to get into shading right now, but I'm just explaining what the pen to the pencil tool is. And if I don't want to have it shaded like that, I don't have to technically have it as a line. I can have it as a circle. I can do the same thing. Pretty much I just use the pencil tool for shading. That's what I use the pencil tool for. Uh, the shape tool, the rectangle tool, I'm fucking going all over the place. I can't even keep up myself. The rectangle tool basically just makes shapes, okay? You can choose from a variety of uh, amazing shapes, but I don't use this because I don't know. I just don't fucking use the shape tool. Barely. Sometimes I use, sometimes I don't, but it's it's pretty rare when I use it. The brush tool is basically your tool of drawing. Now I'm going to tell you some stuff about the brush tool. When drawing, it's best to have your smoothness at 41. When you come to the properties down here, you'll see that it says 41. Normally when you have flash, you're going to have your shit all the way to 100. And what this looks like is fucking butthole. I don't know why they even have this as a setting because this looks like fucking shit. Okay, you don't want that. You want 41. Because it's not too much and it's not too less. It's kind of just in the middle. And when you have it at 41... I usually don't work at this size. I uh, skeleton at this size and zoom in around 200%, but we'll get into that later. Uh, the ink bottle tool basically just, uh, if there was ever an outline, like for instance, if I made this and I ink bottle tooled it, it would make the line inside of it thicker. It's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. 
uh, the paint bucket tool pretty much is self-explanatory. If you know what paint is, you've used the paint bucket tool, it just colors shit in. The eraser tool erases stuff. I mean, this is self-explanatory. I feel like a retard, but and this is this is easy shit. Uh, the, the eyedropper tool, exactly like paint, you take the color. The only difference is from Flash, which is really cool, is this really helps make a platelet. Uh, say you change all the colors, I'm just going to make a really strange platelet, and I'm not going to have any of the original colors that they give me. I'm going to change all of them to like some lighter color version and I'm going to show you what it basically does. So for now I'm just going to get just going to get three colors. Now watch. I take the eyedropper tool just once. As you can see down here, you don't see anything, right? You just see the main stuff you start with. You come in here, you take this once. I use the eyedropper tool. I just did that once. I come in here and it's there. So if you're ever doing a flash and you really want to save colors, remember to use the eyedropper tool to take the colors and it will automatically be saved in the area. All you need to do is do it once and there you go. You have these fully available to use whenever you want. So when you're using like skin color and you need a certain shade, remember to eyedrop that shade because it will always appear here. Uh, you can do it as much as you want after it's already been added and it will never, it, since it's already been added, it won't duplicate itself, which would be fucking annoying if it did, so just remember that. Uh, the hand tool, hand tool moves your canvas space. I know this has been in like Photoshop and shit, so people should know what this is. Now when you're using the zoom in tool, you would zoom in at about, well as far as it goes, as I think it's, yeah, it's 2000. 2000 is pretty far. I don't recommend using it unless you're doing certain games that involve zooming in a lot. But for the most part, you'd probably be working around, the deepest you would go would probably be 600 to 800. That's about the farthest I go in. I don't go any farther. It's too far when that happens. And you need you have a lot of canvas space. You have a huge amount of canvas space. If you think this is all you have, I'm zoomed out at 16%. And I'm just going to make all that space. You have all this area to fucking draw. And if you have... Um, Vcam, you can pretty much get that whole area without it looking shitty. So, but we'll explain that in a later episode, but as for now, I'm just explaining the zoom in. If you don't like the zoom in that it gives you, because it only gives you like 200 and stuff, you can come in here and manually change it in your workspace area. All you do is you basically point a number. If you want to work at 300 or you want to be precise and work at 230, it pretty much zooms in at exactly that. There's no hassle. That's pretty much what I use because I don't like the zoom in tool but if I'm in a hurry I'll zoom in and I'll do it manually because it, it automatically sets it at a certain 200 or so fucking zoom in things I, I don't know what the fuck you call those things uh, here's a really helpful tool the no color tool when shading it's extremely important uh, let's say you shade something for example I'm just gonna like I've been doing I'm gonna come over here and shade the square and I'm going to shade it this color. Now I'm going to select everything by just coming up here and selecting the main frame. This basically selects every single thing that's on this one frame. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go into the stroke color. I'm going to open up the pen tool because I want to remove the pen line. Now I'm going to come over here where the rainbow circle thing is and then there is the no color option. I click that and that takes away color. And as simple as it is, <laughs> that's about as easy as it is to shade. If you're doing it like this, and you're fucking like literally drawing shade colors, well your stuff is going to look like fucking shit. And you don't want to do that because it looks fucking horrible and that's just old fucking shit. You need to do it this way. This is the right way to do it. I'm sure there's other ways, and my friend knows another way, and I really don't know how the fuck he does it. You can, like, erase these lines somehow, the eraser tool. But I've been doing it like this forever, and it, it, it works, pretty much. But if you ever, if it doesn't work, you need to have this selected before you can remove the color. It's extremely important. Did you see what I just did? I couldn't remove it because it didn't have it selected, but now that I have it selected, the color's removed. Now, these just swap colors. You basically swap between um, pencil and... Uh, pencil and brush. It's pretty self-explanatory. These convert it to black and white. Uh, the snap to objects tool, uh, I don't really use it for reasons that I don't need to, but um, 
rotate skew. You see, this stuff I just don't use. I don't use this shit. I've never really gotten into using these fucking things. I'm sure they do stuff, and you guys are welcome to try it out, but I mainly just use this shit. And there's a lot of stuff. Now, what I usually use to explain what I use when I draw is I use, when I zoom in, I have this selected. I have number two selected, and I have it set at 100% usually. This is pretty much the best to skeleton with, in my opinion. If you're going to be going any s smaller, you'd probably need to select your smoothness and make it less smooth, like make it 26. That way, it doesn't interfere, and you can fucking go as small as you want. But I just recommend skeletoning at 100%. Now, when you go back into the picture, I usually pick the third selection for this. If you know what this is, this is the brush size, basically. So it's like the third selection, and I zoom in and nearly double that. And I just start drawing. In my opinion, this is probably the best. Oh, wait, fuck. I have it set at 26. In my opinion, this is probably the best drawing thing in my opinion, just because it, it just works and it functions better. Because when you zoom out, it looks small, and the lines look um, smooth, and they look good. But when you zoom in, they don't look that good. They look jagged and ugly. So it kind of just tricks the eyes, in my opinion. It looks pretty good. That's what I do, in case you're wondering. If I'm talking too fast, I'm sorry, but um, I want to get a lot of shit into this first part. Uh, this is for tablet settings. You can uncheck it and draw shitty again, or you can use the tablet and draw liney again, make it look good. It's completely up to you. Uh, use tilt. Don't use tilt. Uh, tilt is dumb. If you want to use tilt, uh, good luck, but I'm, I don't recommend it. Just fucking use pressure. Pressure is what you use, and basically that's just all the buttons. Uh, next time we're going to go over uh, colors and like making gradient backgrounds for certain things, gradients and like uh, filters, and we're going to pretty much go over everything in the properties, and we're going to learn about properties. Uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Hey everybody, it's Spazkid, and it's Sunday, so we're going to go over the Sunday tutorial. Um, lesson 2, we're going to talk about filters and effects. Uh, today we're going to talk about colors and swatches over here on the side of the library. We're going to talk a little bit about the library. We're going to talk about the properties and filters. We're not going to be talking about the output, because the reason why I have output is because I have a V-cam, and it gives me output whenever, but we're not getting into this shit. We'll get into this a little later. Uh, but we'll be talking about gradients and how to change your gradients, colors, and all this shit. And we're also going to be talking about how to set up your hotkey. So we're going to start immediately. Uh, what we're going to be learning today, what the hotkey we're learning, you can change any other one you want, but the one we're learning today is the smooth to give it that shake effect to your animation. So what we need to do is we need to go up to edit, and we need to go to keyboard shortcuts. When we're in keyboard shortcuts, you'll see drawing, menu, command, all this stuff. Go to modify. Modify will bring you to shape. When you see shape, click shape. Shape will give you another drop down menu, and you should see smooth. Now, I already have my smooth set as Control Alt Z. You can change it to whatever you want, but make sure it's not uh, one that's already being used, like Control Alt. I'll give you an example. If you did Control and A, this is already a command that's called, this shortcut is already assigned to select all. So it'll basically tell you what you cannot use, and you'd probably go and change it, but for now, I'm just going to stick with control. I'm going to change this. No, I'm going to press uh, control Z and I'm going to click change. And that should add it to the shortcuts. If it doesn't, then click the square, the fucking plus, and it should add it as well. We're going to then go ahead and click OK. And that should automatically set smooth. It's control Z. It doesn't always happen all the time, so you got to give it a little bit of time. Like, for instance, if I, it might work. Now, you see, I'm pressing control Z and it's not working. So we're going to do everything I just said again. going to go keyboard shortcuts, modify. Uh, shape and smooth. I'm going to click it again, go to change, and I'm going to press OK. And now I'm going to see if it works. Yeah, it works. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of shaking. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I basically mean by shaking. So I'm going to insert a keyframe and I'm going to press Control Z about three times, no, two times because it looks terrible when I did it three. 
And what it should give you, I'm going to uh, space it out using Control F, Control 5, about three spaces each. And as you see, it gives that shake effect. So if I was to preview it in Flash, which I'm going to do right now, go to File, Publish Preview, go to Flash. As you can see, it has a bit of a filter, uh, shake effect. And you can change it to any hotkey you want, but this is just for smoothing, and most people use smoothing when they're using, like, to shake or something. And it's a really useful. To change your shortcut keys to, to function for what uh, is easier to use is highly recommended. Because you're going to fucking want to be able to access stuff fast, and you're not going to want to have to manually come in and manually change these lines. That's just going to take forever. Okay, so he's gone over smooth. Now we're going to talk about um, filter effects and effects in general, like blend and stuff. Stuff you normally didn't know, maybe you did, but I'm just going to tell you guys anyways. So what we're going to start with is we're gonna, I already made a symbol. Um, this basic sad Pac-Man thing, ghost thing. Uh, if you ever want to break a symbol apart to turn it back into something else, simply press Control and B together. So that's Control plus B, and that breaks symbols apart. So what that does is, what that basically means when you press Control and B is, if you have a symbol, and let's say, like, oh, I need to edit this symbol, but I don't feel like going into the, editing the symbol and changing everything, like going in, oh, man, I fucked it up in the library. Now, like, let's, for example, if I was to give him a mouth, you see, now he has a mouth. But let's say I didn't want that. So I'm going to press Control z until the mouth's gone. So I'm going to come back out here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to press Control b That breaks it apart. I make the mouth. And as you see, it doesn't interfere with your library picture. So remember that. That's very important. You don't want to change your symbols if you're using symbols, okay? That's very important. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that in. I'm going to press Control-B, and I'm going to convert this into a graphic. I'm going to convert this into a movie clip. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about uh, when you can only use filter effects. So. As you see, I made a graphic and I made a movie clip in my library. So I come over here to filters and I'm going to go ahead and lay my, my movie clip out. And when I come to filters, and by the way, if you don't have filters available, simply go up to the windows at the top of the file and then you'll see properties there and just click filters. Filters should bring up properties as well, so remember that. You go to filters and you see, since it's a movie clip, it's available. You can add filters or whatever you want. See, I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to add a graphic instead, and I'm going to show you the option you get. As you see, I don't get an option. That's because you can only edit text and movie clips. You can add filter effects to text and movie clips. Okay, you can you can add stuff to graphics, but you're going to have to convert it to a symbol first. You're going to, I mean, a movie clip first, in order to add filter effects. So if you want to have a graphic with a filter effect, it has to be converted to a movie clip. Remember that you can't turn graphics into filter effects. So I have my symbol and I go to filters I click the arrow because if you guys really don't understand instructions there's instructions literally right there and I come over here and I get a mess of options a mess of options so I go to adjust color and I can adjust the color I can make it whatever the hell I want I can make it as bright as I want as dark as I want and then I can change the color the hue of it can reset that. Pretty easy. Uh, the gradient bevel looks like shit. I don't like gradient bevel, but you can mess with it here. I don't recommend doing it because it just doesn't look good, but I mean, you're welcome to. I mean, there's just a mess of options to use. There's there's glow, blur, drop shadow. Um, there's just tons of stuff. You guys are welcome to mess around with that, but that's basically how you add filters. You add filters to movie clips and text. Now we're going to talk about a special kind of effect, and that's Blend. And Blend is available in the Properties menu, I think, of anything, really. Graphics or um, graphics or movie clip. It pretty much is for anything, actually. Everything except bitmap. So, movie clip, a graphic, and you would probably have to convert text to a movie clip. Let me, let me make sure. 
go over here. I'm going to type something. Uh, I'm going to convert it into a symbol. S. I'm going to come over here. Yeah, you have to convert text to a symbol in order to mess with it in the blend. So, since I already have this as a movie clip, I'm just going to go ahead and insert a background. Uh, I'm going to insert this cherry background. And I'm going to put this Pac-Man over it. So, I have this background and I have this. Now, when you're in the properties, after I click the movie clip, I'm going in the properties of the movie clip. And I'm going to go to blend. When I go to blend, I get a mess of options. This gives really cool effects to pretty much anything. Uh, it's good to use when you're using like sunsets and you can put it over your thing. Just change the the lighting basically. Uh, let me just give you an example of some of them. This would be overlay. As you see, it sort of like blends into the background. Hard light, it makes um, it basically just becomes like a harder version of um, overlay. Uh, subtract makes it minus uh, screen there's just a bunch of stuff to choose from and blend is really cool when you're using certain things like uh, let me give you an example I'm gonna change this background to green machine and I'm gonna come over here just gonna make this normal I'm gonna go ahead I'm just gonna make a color I'm gonna go ahead and remove the no color for the pencil and I'm just gonna make a simple I right click press convert to symbol I'm going to turn it into a movie clip and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make this a hard light. I'm going to stretch this over this so you can see what I mean. See, as you can see, I changed the, cov the color of the Pac-Man thing to blue because this is hard light. This is hard light over. I can go to overlay and it, you can just experiment and try different things. You can, you can get some really cool effects out of blend and there's just a lot of stuff you can do. And that's pretty much all there is to do with Blaine. You can uh, just mess around with that. There's tons of options and just go crazy. So now I'm going to talk about the library. The library is fairly easy to use. Uh, let's say I had another Flash open. I could go ahead and import uh, graphics and stuff from that Flash if I simply choose it from here. It would drop down all the graphics here and I could just drag them onto my library. Uh, that's one really nifty thing. Uh, Another thing is you can change the background of the graphics. So whatever this is would probably interfere with your graphic color. So as you see, all my graphics have a blue background. But I don't like that, so I'm just going to turn it back to white. And I have a white background. Uh, if you ever want to change the properties again, uh, like let's say you don't want this text file to be SSS, and you want it to be a uh, graphic, and you want it to be called faggot, so you can simply go to properties by right-clicking, go to properties, and it opens up the symbol properties again. So I'm going to go ahead and go to graphic and I'm going to call it faggot. I'm going to press OK. That basically just turned that into faggot. So I no longer have S. It now says faggot and it's a graphic. If I want to duplicate it and change it into something completely different, I'll right click it, go to duplicate, and it'll say copy. I could call it copy or I could call it faggot. And this time, Instead of making it a graphic, I'm going to make it a movie clip because I'm going to mix it up a little bit. So now I have faggots, same thing, only it's a movie clip and it's a graphic. I can come in here and edit it and I can change the text to be something completely different. And that will not interfere with my original one because I duplicated it. And that also helps if you want to make more than one symbol of certain mouths and you can change a little bit of it. Uh, if you want to do it lazily, you can do that, and that can also help in that way. Uh, you can also insert a new folder, and you can call it work folder or whatever the hell you want, and you can pretty much just shift and select everything you want, and you can put it in your work folder. This also helps in saving memory, and like if you have too many graphics, like you have around a thousand graphics on your uh, on your uh, workspace because trust me sometimes you can get a thousand graphics that's not that common but I mean it is possible to get a thousand graphics I've gotten 15,000 graphics on um on a single project file a single flash so it is possible and you're gonna wanna be able to sort your stuff so definitely make folders and sort your stuff out being uh, sorted out is extremely important in flash in saving memory and also saving fucking time okay so we talked about the library, we talked about setting up smoothing,
we talked about filter effects, and last but not least, we're going to talk about gradients. Now, personally, from my opinion, I would not recommend gradients as coloring. Gradients is shit. You use gradients smart, okay? Don't use it for coloring. Use it for, like, effects and just shit like that. Do not shade with gradients, okay? This is in 2003. This is 2011. Seriously. It looks like fucking asshole. So I'm going to go to linear, and I already have something set up right now. Before I even start, you're going to see that I have my thing selected. Sometimes you'll notice that, uh, what's going on? I don't have it selected. That's because you might have accidentally set, for instance, I just set stroke color, and I set it as this. And I didn't want to do that. I'm going to make it solid again, and I'm going to make it this color, and I'm going to click the paint bucket, and I'm going to set this to linear. So if you ever wonder why something's not happening, it might be because you might have the pencil tool as the gradients color. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and make a square. Oh, that's not a fucking square. There we go. I'm going to remove this line. There we go. Basically, you just have a gradient square right now. So when we come over here to the color swatches, you have a bunch of options. You have solid color. This is basically just a solid color. It's as simple as that. You have linear. Linear gives you like a gradient and a line. And you have radial, which is sort of like a spiraling out circle. I don't recommend using radial that much because radial looks like ass, so I don't use it. And there's bitmap. And bitmap, you can turn, uh, you can color your items with bitmap, which is okay, I guess. So let's say if I go to bitmap and I choose this, I can, since it's selected right there, there you go. Like, if you really want to use that, it looks like shit, but you're welcome to. You can also change the size of it by simply going to the Gradio Transform tool and making it bigger. Okay, so you're welcome to do that, but we're not worried about that. We're talking about uh, gradients right now. So we're going to go to Linear, and right now I have a gradial thing, and I have it set at 100. I'm just going to put this at Normal. This is normally what I have it set at. Let's say by accident you, s you insert a bunch of these. You're like, fuck, I didn't want to do that. Well, all you got to do is simply click and drag off. That's it. Just cl click and drag off. It'll drag everything off and you won't have to interfere with anything. Let's say you want to insert something in the middle or there you go. Put it right in there, but you don't like it, take away it. And there you go. Everything's back to normal. Just simply drag and take it off. You don't need to like drag all the way out here. Just a little tiny drag just in this general area right here. But let's say you make a design and you don't make a square. Let's say, for instance, I'm just going to scribble something. This is not any shape or form of anything. This is like splooge, okay? Just think of it as jizz. So as you see, I'm coming in here and I'm coloring it. I'm going to change this back to black so it doesn't interfere. So I have my color, and I don't want this effect. And I, I can change this all I want, but I'm looking more to edit this. It's very easy. Go to the free transform tool and hold it. It'll give you a drop down menu. This is your gradients transform tool. This is what you use to edit your gradient tool. What I mean is you click this and it gives you this arrow. You can move this around. You can do whatever you want. You give your gradients whatever the fuck you're looking for. You can spin around in circles. You can change the the way it's located. There's so much you can do and it works the same thing with radial only it's more of a circle. See, I did that. Everything's a radiant circle thing. So I come over here, I go to radio gradient tool, and I go to radial, and um, I select it first. I've turned everything into this. Let's come over here, go to gradients tool, and as you see, I made a circle. I did the same thing I did linear, only I had radial selected, and this gives me a circle. This gives you the same option to just uh, mess around with gradients. You can change the size of the color, you can make it bigger and so on. As you can see, let's give you an example. Let's say you select all these and you make these all one color. But you don't want it all one color. Let's say you want these three to be completely different. What you're going to do is you're going to go back from your gradients transform tool, you're going to go back to free transform tool and you're going to use shift and click every individual one and delete these colors. Okay, these are going to leave blank colors. There's nothing in here. These are literally just lines. Okay, this is what I do, so keep in mind, there might be other ways to do it, but this is what I do. What I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to fill it with the colors I wanted. So, 
I don't really care what I use. I'm just going to find example, just just an example of colors. I'm going to change the yellow since I wanted that to be orange. Pretty sure I said that. So I'm going to go over linear. And instead of having pink, I want to make it orange. And yellow. I'm going to stretch it out to make it look basically like the other one. And you can do the same for this one. Go over to this color. Come to linear. Change it to whatever you want. Come to this one. Go to linear. And you can change it to whatever you want as well. And that's about as simple as it is to change the colors and not have everything the same as you want it. Hey, okay, you guys, I decided I'd do a little special thing at the end. Uh, this is what we're going to be learning in the future. This is uh, this would be a complete learning <laughs> thing. So, um, this is an upcoming flash. I can't show you the beginning of this because it's extremely inappropriate for YouTube. And so, but I'm just going to go ahead and play it. You guys can see. In the street like you were a boat and I am the captain. Nah. I really hope I get my patch for this. Don't look at me, you fucking bitch. If you guys didn't know, that was Stamper. Uh, I also have Utah and um, Eagle Raptor help me with this flash. This is going to be a big collaborative type flash coming out in maybe a few weeks to a month. But it's going to be extremely inappropriate, and you can see it on Newgrounds, but it's going to be well worth the wait. Uh, we put a lot of time and a lot of um, sweat, tears, and semen into it, so I hope you guys will... Uh, enjoy it when it comes out and uh, next week we'll be learning about simple action scripts we'll also be learning about how to set up our vcam uh, and we're going to be doing some minor animation to go with the vcam so you guys can expect that oh and a little bit about the layers so yeah if you guys can wait a little bit that'll be coming soon so It's fast kid and before I even start the tutorial, yes, I do use a Wacom bamboo tablet. I do use a tablet, okay? That's what pressure sensitivity means and using pressure and stuff whenever you see these buttons. That would usually indicate a tablet is installed. If you go, let me just link you guys to what I'm using. I use a Wacom bamboo pen tablet. It's the cheapest one. It got a lot of good reviews. Um, in my opinion, it's pretty damn good considering what I used to have was some shitty fucking paper-sized one which sucked dick and I ended up smashing on my fucking bedpost. Um, but these, this one hasn't given me any trouble. Um, I need to get a fucking tablet glove because you will end up like making grease marks just by accident, doesn't matter. Uh, when you do it a lot, you get, it just happens. So I should probably get that, but I'm going to be getting an N2S4 soon eventually when I get the money so that's what I've been saving up for but for now it's just good to start out with uh, hey everybody it's Spaz Kid, and I'm gonna go ahead and explain something I really don't enjoy and it's spray animation but there are people out there who do that and they use it as a medium instead of drawing so this is for those people who use it I know a little bit about spray animation but barely pretty much anything because I don't do it but what I do know is I do know how to trace a bit map to let you edit it so I'm going to drag out a bitmap I googled, I really don't care, and I'm going to go up, this is what I'm going to do, you got to follow these, important. it's important not to break this bitmap apart, if you break it apart, none of these instructions will work, so if you're wondering why it's not working, you probably broke it apart, and you just grab the bitmap again and put it out, it has to be a bitmap. You go up to modify, you go to bitmap, and then you go to trace bitmap. Now, this is important, uh, color threshold is basically the depth of the color. It starts out at 100. I do not recommend 100 for sprites. Um, basically, set it from 50 to 56, anywhere in there. I recommend 56, and minimum area is also important to be extremely low. Uh, if you put more, you, the, your sprites will start looking like shit. So, personally, the perfect setting I have is 56 for color threshold, and minimum area is 1 and be sure to put curve fit to pixels because this isn't a picture and the corner threshold put many corners and now press OK now this might you gotta be careful because 
sometimes tracing sprites uh, will m take a while, and if you can, thing starts to freeze, just let it go. My computer is pretty good, so it doesn't really react. But my XP used to mess up whenever I try to trace sprites, so I never do it. But as you can see, no real color was lost. I can delete the background, and I can select a sprite, move it around freely, and convert it to a symbol, and so on. Now let me give you an example of what would happen if I didn't do what I had it set to. I'm just going to go ahead and press Control Z until it turns to a bitmap. I'm going to go to Modify and I'm going to go to Bitmap Everything again. This time I'm going to put this at 100 and I'm going to put the minimum area at 10. Now as you can see it raped my quality and made it look like I'm playing a NES an old NES game with um, fairly updated graphics for a Mega Man thing. See, there's no white around the eyes. Everything's been fucking ruined. That's why it's important to have what I said, the settings, because messing around with the colors uh, will mess with your sprites. So remember, 56 for color threshold and 1 for the minimum area or whatever. That's really important. So I'm going to do this running animation, basically. And what I'm going to do, basically, like right now, is I'm going to convert all of these individual symbols and I'm just going to convert them into graphic. I don't really care for now. It's just for an example. It doesn't matter where I put them. I just need to convert these into a symbol. Because I removed the background. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Hey everybody. So um, Okay, so I removed everything and I basically set up this little running sequence. If you notice these numbers appear, um, you will. if you're wondering why I did that, that's for me it helps me out so I recommend doing it as well because it really sorts your shit out because when we're swapping symbols it's really important to be organized because you're gonna be making it look like it's flowing professionally so basically I have the third symbol and the instance of symbol three now if I come to the properties and you see the instance the instance basically means the name L this doesn't necessarily have to be symbol three this can be called um, Mega Man 1 and it's basically just the name but for now, I'm just trying to make it easy on myself, so I call it Symbol 3. Now, if it was Mega Man 1, I'd probably call it M1, and I would replace 3 with M1. And the Symbol 3 over here would be called Mega Man 1. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a new frame, completely new frame. I'm going to lock these. How to do that is you come up here with this lock area, and you just click these circles in here. And I'm going to insert a new layer, layer 6. Now with layer 6, I'm just going to go ahead and put 3 in since that's what my first symbol is. And what I'm going to do from here is fairly easy. I'm going to insert a few keyframes, just a few. I'm sure there's more, but for now that's what I have. Um, I inserted all the, all these are keyframes. I pressed F6 till this was all full. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the second frame and I'm going to swap it. So how to swap is I select everything. I select the, I select the frame and it selects everything. I right click and I go to swap symbol. You can also set this up in the hotkeys, but I'm, I already told you guys how to do that, so I don't really want to get into that. But this is the easiest in my opinion, and you, I'm sure there's button layouts you could do if you want. But just right click and go to swap symbol. And since three is the first one and four is the second one, I'm going to go ahead and go to symbol four. So as you see, it swapped to symbol four. Now I'm going to repeat the process, and I'm going to go to 5, select everything, select the third frame. I'm going to right click this, go to swap symbol. And since I already did 4, I'm going to do 5. Now I'm just going to keep repeating the process till I get all those at the top done. And I'll get back to you guys. Alright, so I spaced mine too, and basically this is what I got. You know, it's not that great. I didn't really pay attention that much. It was just for an example, but I'm sure you guys can make better than me. But I'm going to go ahead and just preview this in Flash. So as you see, it doesn't bounce. It doesn't boggle all over the place. It stays in one exact area. That's because since these are all basically the same size, it literally just swaps the size. Uh, like, it just swaps the positions. Now, if you're doing like mouths or certain mouths, you might have to skew it just slightly. But for the most part, swapping symbols is really important uh, for tweening and stuff like that for those people who don't do frame by frame. And swapping symbols is highly recommended if you want to get something done in time and you don't want to be late. So 
that's basically how you swap symbols. Let's say for instance that you want to take all these Mega Man sprites and put them in one graphic because you don't want them on the main canvas for any for some reason. There's two ways to do it, but I'm going to do it um, a pretty easy way. There's even an easier way, but I'm not getting into that. This is still not hard, so it's good for now. When we get into extensions, I'll tell you about what to download if you want to get the easier route. But for now, uh, we're just going to do basically remove, don't just fucking turn off the no colors of the pencil. Honestly, I hate how it's always fucking on all the time. Just turn it off, make the shape. Uh, any shape, doesn't matter, just grab a fucking shape tool and make a shape. Convert it into a symbol, I don't give a shit about the name, because it doesn't matter. Uh, select all the frames at the top and just literally go to copy frames. Now that you converted this into a symbol, go into it, and literally paste it on that frame everything. And it should override it and make it the sprite, but obviously it won't be in the same location. And from there, Take this point, this white point, select everything, and move it in the middle. You'll thank me later. Because it interferes with sizing and it keeps a static shape. If you have it over here, and you try to make a shape, see, wherever it's located is exactly how it's going to space itself out. So Now we have a bigger sprite, and if I was to say insert a keyframe over here, and create a motion tween, and make it move, and I was just a preview it in Flash. Oh look, it's a moving sprite. Obviously it looks like dick, because it didn't really try too much on following the running procedure, but, you know, that's basically how easy it is to make um, uh, sprites and to graphics and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to teach you guys about simple action script codes. Now, I'm not a fucking mathematician, so I can't teach you how to make a goddamn game. You're going to have to look for tutorials elsewhere. This is just for like your basic stop movie and so on. Um, and so forth. I'm not getting into really deep shit. So we're going to learn the basics. The basic fucking actions. So we're going to start immediately. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to draw something. Um, it's not going to be too impressive. But I'm just going to draw a simple hand motion. You know where to start. Okay, and I'll draw something. Let's speed this up. So now we're gonna get into actions. Okay, so I made a basic hand motion thing. It's really simple. It's just a hand doing a thumbs up. And that's as simple as it was. How long it took. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you guys how to set up actions. I recommend setting them automatically through the windows up here and going to actions and getting them open and getting them ready so you have them at your disposal whenever you want down here from there you can go to the frame then open your actions window by simply double clicking and this is in the frame if you were hitting a movie clip you would actually click the movie clip and then right click and go to action but since this we're just doing framework we're just editing the frame we're putting action script in the frame we're not putting it in a symbol so this is on the timeline. When you first get Flash, you won't have any of this shit. You will have this, and you probably won't know what uh, folder to open. What I recommend using is global functions, and then going to timeline control. These are the basic control you're going to use when you're animating in Flash. Everything else is pretty much for games, but these are in Flash. The only one that isn't in Flash is Root. But I will teach you guys how to do root because it's a little more different from all of these. And root actually, you can do a lot with a root action, but for now we're just going to stick with the basics. So we have go to and play. I'm going to tell you what each one does. Go to and play, if we were to, to add go to and play, just simply hold it and drag it in. With go to and play, this basically goes to a frame or a frame label and it plays it. So when it hits that frame, it automatically warps to the frame you have it set at. So for instance, I currently have it set at to play at um, 1, and it's on the 4th frame. That means once it hits the 4th frame, it will automatically warp to the 1st frame. 
because it's frame number one and go to and play. I can press go to and stop and it'll stop, but I want to show a loop motion, so I'm going to leave it on go to and play. I'm just going to minimize this and preview it in flash so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So as you see, it doesn't continue past the fourth frame because I told it to constantly warp back to the first frame. So I'm going to open up my actions again by double clicking in at the bottom. And this time, I'm going to label my frame. Uh, I'm going to make it when it hits here, it's going to warp to the first frame, but it's not going to be called frame number one. I'm going to call it a different name. So for now, I'm just going to call it frame label. I'm going to call it penis. Now penis doesn't exist until I make it. So I'm going to go to this frame, I'm going to open up the properties window, and I'm going to go to the frame label down here. And from here, I'm going to name it penis. Once you get a flag up in your frame, that means you have it set as a label. You can have a bunch of frame labels. Try not to make the same name. You'll get fucking... I don't even think it'll do it. Uh, let me see. It'll probably give me an error if I do two frame labels of the same name. These are the exact same. Yeah. See, it says warning, duplicate, label. Just you get these warning symbols. You don't want warning symbols. That means you fucked up. So I'm going to take away that because I want it to go to the first one. It'll, it's going to look exactly like the, the first one. The only difference is uh, it's through frame labeling. So we have our frame labeled as penis. And we have it on a constant loop because we have it on go to and play. So that means every time it hits this, this action will go to penis. So I'll preview it in flash and it'll look exactly like the last one, only it's like the exact opposite. As you can see, I'm right. And that's pretty much as easy as it is to frame label. There's really nothing else. You can name fucking anything. You can go to all of these and name them something completely different. It... Okay, what the fuck? Um... Just get creative with your labels and fucking... You can loop to all of them. This also helps if you're doing like uh, collaborative things and you have somebody staying and let's say you have a lot of frames and you want certain buttons to link to those uh, flash movies so you would have a button and you press play and it would automatically warp after you press play to said frame label so you'd say like um, collaborative um, effort number two and it's just the whatever flash number two you have set at that army um, works to it. So at the end of that flash you can make it warp to the beginning again where the whole menu system is. So there's a lot you can do with these actions and these are very important. There's also stop all sound when you continue when you're animating in flash but we're not getting into sound just yet and that's more for games and stuff. So it's really important to learn action scripts and frame labels and all this stuff when animating because even if you think this stuff isn't important eventually you're gonna need to learn it. So what we're doing now is we're going to do buttons. Since we did frames, and teach you guys how to do buttons, and buttons are fairly easy to do. Um, I recommend putting a stop at the end. You don't always have to do that to put a replay button. If you don't want to put a re replay button, you can literally just make it loop back to the beginning. Most people do that anyways, and you can just stop it there, doing the go to and stop trick. Um, or just literally having it at the end of the frame to go to and stop. So... Go ahead and put a stop motion at the very beginning. Because you're going to be playing anyway, so if it's on stop, it doesn't matter. So since I have a stop, I'm just going to make a button real quick. And this is completely being made right now. So I'm just going to make a play button. Uh, I could I could draw it and make it easier on myself, but I'm just going to uh, do text now. Because it's even easier. So I'm going to go to the button. I don't care what it's named. And I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to double click and go inside of the button. And I'm going to press F6 till these are all filled. The reason why you'd, why you'd press F6 to fill up over, down, and hit is because when you go to up, you can actually edit these and convert them into individual uh, movie clips and symbols and make them do like different things, like uh, it's maybe glow or spin around or whatever the fuck you want. And you can do that on these individually since they're not all the same graphic. 
Uh, you can always make them all the same graphic and just copy and paste and paste, paste, and so on. But I'm going to explain what these mean. Up is when there is nothing touching the button. Over is when the mouse is touching the button. Down is when the button is being uh, pressed down when you're clicking and holding. And hit is the area you hit it. These are all very important. So I'm not really going to animate anything, like make anything too amazing, but I'm going to show you a differentiation. So for over, I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out big, or a little bit big. Down, I'm going to press, make it like shrink. And then the hit area is generally going to be here. Now another rule that people should really follow is to make another layer if you do text, and to put a transparent background. Because nobody wants to fucking click the, the text area. Because once you turn this into a button, these letters will be what you click. And nobody wants to fucking sit here and have to click the letters. Because some people make such tiny ass play buttons that you have to click. And you sometimes click into this area. It's just fucking annoying. Save everybody the trouble and just make a transparent background. It doesn't matter like uh, what color you use since it is transparent. But I want to show some difference. So... I'm going to use blue and I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to make this alpha zero. So when I zoom out, it's invisible. I'm going to press F6 again. I'm going to stretch this out to fit all these areas. I'm going to press F6 again. I'm going to minimize it to fit this general area. And the general play button. I'm just going to copy and paste from here to here. Can I shrink this a little bit? Okay. So we have our basic play button. There's nothing too fancy. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to come back out of the scene. And I'm going to come into the actual symbol I just clicked. And I'm going to right click it. And I'm going to go to actions. Now from here, I'm going to take the button. Uh, play. And I'm going to drag it on. Now there's a difference from a frame to a symbol like a button. For instance, you have on release now, because since it's a button, on release, you want it to play. So it's going to play once I click it. For instance, I'm going to give an example. I'm going to preview it in flash, and nothing's happening right now, so I come over to it, I press play, and it plays. Now, if I don't have it say play, or like, uh, let's say that I come over here, I don't have any action in this button, and I just have a play up here with a stop. It's not going to work because of the stop. So remember that. It's important to put uh, the actions you do for a button that you want it to do inside the actual button. And that's pretty much all there is to buttons. So I opened up a pretty basic animatic with a VCAM. Now I'm going to show you the difference to what a VCAM looks like. So right now I have a VCAM inserted, and it should give a sort of effect. Now I'm going to preview it in Flash so you guys can see what it looks like. Now I'm going to remove the VCAM and show you what it looks like without the VCAM. So it's really it looks pretty basic, and it doesn't look that movie. Uh, VCAMs basically take what you you're working on they basically make a moving canvas for you to like whatever you're moving or whatever your uh has is in vision you can use so like for instance once i bring it back the only area that the flash will recognize with a vcam is the area inside the vcam another really important rule is to match the vcam size with the canvas size so as you can see, it's a stretched out rectangle um, because that's pretty much how big the canvas size is. And that's extremely important as well. You don't want to squish square because it'll look terrible. If I show you what it looks like with a squish square, it would look weird. So the first few seconds, it looks like shit. It's because it's smushed square and it follows the rectangle. So how to install a VCAM is really fairly easy. What's going to happen is, so we have our 
RC, I have it saved in a folder called RCT3. In the description, you will see a download for the camera extension. If you do not have an Adobe extension installed on your computer, then get one. I'm pretty sure the camera works for everything, but CS2. Um, I don't know why, I'm just, I'm positive that doesn't work for CS2, but everything else, CS3, 8, MX, uh, CS4, I don't think it works for CS5, but it might, so I would just try it too, but it's there, so the extension's there, you can download it, uh, I saved it in this folder called RCT3 because my desktop is a fucking mess, and all I do really is you just after you have the Adobe extension installed you would double click the camera. I already have the reanimator camera installed so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, delete it. So what I do now is I just go to open or I go to install new extension and since I have mine in the RCT3 I'm gonna select it I'm going to press accept and it says it has been successfully installed and so that should install it and it's as simple as that you can install as much extensions as you want I also linked you guys to the Anapedia so and there's tons of cool shit on there I will get into some more stuff some more extensions that are fucking badass but for now it's just good to install the camera so what you're going to need before you can install the camera is an Adobe extension manager okay you can find that on the Adobe homepage or an, an Adobe site. It's free. I don't think it costs any money because it's it, it goes with your flash. So, and it shouldn't interfere with anything. So now that I have my camera installed. If you're wondering how to set the camera, it's very simple. Once in your actual flash, when you first install it, you're gonna have to close flash, and then you come up to new camera in the commands, and then it creates a new camera. From here, you can pretty much edit the camera. You can go in and remove all these. I recommend putting a different color since it is transparent. There's actually nothing in there, and it's just lines. And um, making it a little transparent so you can see it overlay, like I did with the purple one. For instance, this is the purple one. And pretty much you can just move it freely, uh, spin it around, it doesn't really matter. So, VCams are really cool. Uh, none of these areas are seen, it's just this general area. So, if you don't really want to draw a body, and you're like, fuck, I don't feel like drawing all this shit. And let's say you, let's say you actually drew a body. Like, uh, you drew somebody's body. Mine looks like shit, but this is an example. So you drew a body here. And uh, you don't want this area seen down here. So what you would do is you just simply put the V-cam right here, and the only area that's seen is up here. Nothing's seen down here. So that also saves a lot of time in the long run, and it's just great in general. Oh, I almost forgot. This is extremely important. I'm animating in a 2.0 action script, okay? This won't work in 3.0. If you get an error and your uh, VCAM's not working, that might be because you're using a 3.0 action script, okay? It has to be 2.0. Uh, same thing for if you're getting in more extensions. Certain extensions you might have to get um, a certain action script for. It might not be on the Anapedia. You might have to actually search for other extensions that'll work for 3.0 if you want to use 3.0. Personally, I hate 3.0, but 2.0 is good, but if you like 3.0, then by all means, find another extension that can do it. But for now, I'm using a 2.0, okay, 2.0 action script. That's highly important. And that should be all we're learning today, because I don't want to stretch this out to be fucking 30 minutes long. Uh, it's already pretty long as it is. I was shooting for 20, but some stuff takes a lot more to explain, like action scripts. Next time we're gonna learn some we're gonna learn some minor animations since we got most of the basic stuff out of the way. Uh, we're gonna actually learn about slow down time and um, spacing yourself out and the rule of animation. We're also gonna be talking about how to edit our ease, how to slow and speed up and do certain things with tweens for those people who tween, and just some mess of other stuff that you'll eventually see when we get around to it next week. So 
Thanks for tuning in this Sunday. Let's see you next Sunday. Hey everybody, it's Sunday, and it's time for Sunday Tutorials. I just recently got a new screen recording thing, Camtasia 7 is what I have. I had uh, Camtasia 2, but the trial and everything ran out, so now I'm using 7. And 7 is a little weird, but I kind of like it a little more. I just kind of got to get used to it. I don't really like the delay they have before you start it, but for the most part, it's pretty good. So if you're looking for a good screen recording thing, um, I would probably get Camtasia seven it's pretty good so before I get into anything I'm gonna teach you guys how to onion skin and onion skin is pretty fucking easy uh, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna draw a picture I'm not drawing anything good right now I don't I don't care I'm just trying to show you guys what onion skinning is and it's just gonna be a ball so I basically have a bubble or a ball something really simple and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to insert another frame and I'm going to delete it. So now I have one frame and I have a clear frame. Now all I do to have onion skin is I select it in here. This is my onion skin. I can uh, use an outline onion skin and basically see my other layer and see what it looks like in outline form or I can just see what it looks like in skin form. And if I was to color it, I'm going to connect it so you can see it colored make it a lighter color maybe put a minor shade uh... that sucks dick uh, whatever it looks like shit but i'm just trying to show you see if i come over here you see that it's the same you can also space your skins out if you want uh, it, it doesn't matter, this thing could space out as far as you want, depending on how much frames you have. I don't recommend spacing it out like 60 or 50 frames because it's hard to work with. Um, mainly, if you have to, I would at least space it out maybe 10 frames at the most, uh, but 20 is pushing it, and like you wouldn't want to do that unless you alpha half your shit, so... That's pretty much all there is to onion skinning. Uh, just click this button, and you can swap between onion skinning and not onion skinning. So once I have this onion skin, I basically have a small replica of what I used to have. I'm going to go ahead and take this color, or a small uh, skin, and I'm just going to draw another shape. And then I'm going to continue the process because I can still see it. And I'm just going to keep making it bounce. There we go. That's what I mean. Skinning is fucking great because it makes frame by frame way fucking easier. Okay, so we talked about um, onion skinning and we've talked about how I skeleton, what I do to animate. Now I'm going to get into actual animating. Uh, as corny as this may sound, this is one of the most important rules when animating. Uh, when something is in motion, an object stays in motion, but when something is in rest, an object stays at rest. Uh, Newton's first law applies for animating, and anything in general. Technically, you can't throw your hand down and stop it perfectly. There is always a bounce effect. And when animating, that is true as well. Uh, whenever there's movement, there's always some sort of effect after something stops, and remember that. Also, like I said, do not draw in one frame unless you're working in like 12 frames per second. Uh, if you're at 25 frames per second, work in two. It's a lot more fluent and it works better. I'm going to give you an example. Um, I'm going to draw a head turning. 
so I'm, gonna, I'm at 100%, so I'm gonna go to 2, so here's my head, it's facing this way, and yeah, I know it's a skeleton, but you know, this is what I do, and the head's gonna turn, so what I'm gonna do before I even start anything is, I have an onion skin right now, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to have a slight move. Nothing too fancy, just a slight movement of the head. Just slightly moved over. Like the head's turning only a sliver. Next I'm going to have a pretty big gap move. So I'm going to have the whole face sort of turn a little faster. So this is a pretty big gap. Now I'm going to have a conclusion. But before I even do the conclusion, I'm going to make another frame. This is the bounce effect I'm talking about. So. I have this frame here, and I'm going to use my onion skin. I'm going to skip this frame, okay? I'm not going to draw on this frame. I'm going to skip it, and I'm going to go to the one, other one I made. I'm going to make my onion skin. I'm going to draw it out until I actually see this one again. Then I'm going to see, uh, I'm going to draw myself the head when it's fully turned. I don't really care about the shape because uh, this is just an example. So there's where the neck would be. If the head's right there. Now this is important. If the head is in this general area, I want the bounce effect to sort of be a little more over, so I'm going to make it go a little more to the right. That was a little fast. And you see how it's kind of abrupt? And it, it, this, the motion is sort of like a... It just seems like really, it bounces a little too fast. Well, I recommend going about three frames and adding a little, a little tiny movement after that frame going to the left. Since that's technically where the bounce was. This is going to be your last frame. This is a slow down frame. And there we go. You can technically don't have to do three frames. You can do uh, uh, three or or two, but uh, that's mainly what I do. It's probably look better with an actual face, but you know. So what I have, what you start out with, is you have your main, you have your middle, and then you have your end. Main, middle, end. So what you do is you the main with the main one before you actually start a motion, it's just a slight move, only hesitant, just a little bit of a move. Then you have your big gap, which is your middle, and your middle should show a significant difference in your last frame that there's actually motion going on. Then you would have your conclusion around here. But before that you need your bounce effect. So you need a few frames spaced out from there, if that makes any sense. Notice how it's it's see it sort of bounces back when I move forward and there we go. So I wanna go and flash and preview and see how this looks. And there we go. And that's basically all it is. It's just a matter of spacing yourself out. And even for the middle, 
you can stretch it out a few frames. You don't necessarily have at two. I actually do recommend it sp spreading it out about three in the middle frame, or the middle in, uh, m middle frame you're working with. Um, another thing that's really important you guys can do is like just simply draw your storyboard out, and then you can animate it later. You can add in what motions you want to have. So, for instance, let me give you an example. If I draw somebody who's like gonna wave, okay, is gonna be like. going to wave Okay, so I have a lot of animation I can add in here. Uh, what he's doing basically is first he's saying hi, so he's waving, and then he's sort of explaining something, then he's getting close to the camera and he's putting his hand up to his face. So I'm going to space these out because this is what I'm going to be animating. First off, I'm going to animate the hand motion. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it pretty basic. Uh, I'm going to convert this I'm not really going to convert this, I'm just going to change the alpha to about 50 and I'm going to lock it and I'm going to draw over it. Well, it's still blue but only it's a little brighter so you can see a difference. I'm going to keep my basic head shapes and I don't really have a head I'm going to be working with. And I know it looks terrible but for now I'm just going to make the body like that and I'm going to put the hand on a different layer because I'm gonna be, it's going to be looking different than everything else. So, my hand's here, and what I said, only slight movement. And then a big gap to show differentiation in uh, the style, like you're changing it. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. Uh, just show difference in fucking what you're animating. And the bounce effect. So, since the hand is a little lower, I'm going to have it to about here. And then I'm going to make the arm. I'm going to come back up here. like that. Now you're wondering how I'm going to transition to the next scene. Well I want the guy to sort of go into that form so I'm just going to sort of have to guess how his body will form like that. So I'm going to stretch myself out a little bit and I'm going to create a, a sort of my own motion to sort of go into this. Go into this. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to unlock that so I can see it. Is I'm going to draw this frame. I'm going to stretch out about three, and um, since I want the bounce effect to be about here, I'm just going to go ahead and make slight movement. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be working with. Uh, basically, I'm just going to have a sort of my own thing. I don't really know what he's going to do. 
But I'm going to have him sort of come down. I'm going to make his hands go all uh, uh, jello for a little bit because I like making people with weird limbs. Um, and then he's just sort of just going to be like, uh, put his hands down. So he's swinging around. And uh, the hands are still like that. And I'm going to make the head. I'm going to go ahead and line my onion skin up with that layer to that layer so it's even easier for me to work with. Because you don't want to guess on this type of stuff. Then I'm going to make hands come up. I'm going to move this over so it sort of runs into it. And there we go. I mean, you you got to find a way to work stuff sometimes. Sometimes it's a little harder, but that still looks a little weird, but and there we go. So we have him sort of form into that or turn into that. Now I'm going to make him go into the other one, so I'm going to stretch this over here. I'm going to make this a small one, like I have been. Okay, then I'm going to make him, uh, before he did that, he's going to sort of bounce down a little bit because he flew himself over there kind of fast. And now he's going to draw himself back really quickly as he's spinning himself around. Whoops, swap these out. I don't know what the fuck happened here. I'm also going to add a little bit of a bounce effect back from here. The bounce is going to be going backwards because he's sort of moving his head back before he lunges himself forward. And I'm going to arch the hands a little bit. Now I'm going to swing him forward uh, a little bit, not too much, just a little more than I did before since there was always a slight movement. And I want to sort of like make it equal up with this that it's moving forward. So I'm going to have his hands. So it's sort of clamped down on his hands. Make his hands come down like this. Okay, so that's kind of slow, so I want to speed that up a little bit. Obviously, his head would be over this, if you're wondering why it looks weird. And there we go. Just those little things, those little extra frames make everything better. So you don't technically have to make everything frame by frame. A lot of people think that every frame has to be redrawn. 
that's not always true. I mean, you can do that, but I don't recommend it. It, it takes forever, and you don't. And getting this simple effect is enough, really. And that's pretty much all it is to animating. Uh, pretty much everything else is just line work and coloring. Um, uh, this is uh, what I normally do: is I make a rough skeleton, then I make a fairly less rough skeleton, then I make the final lines. This is like a three-step process, and it takes a lot of time, and you got to put forth a lot of effort. And I, you don't have to necessarily do it the way I do. It just helps in. It really just helps me in like knowing where I should draw, uh, so it's kind of like it's just what I recommend. So I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm not gonna be doing a full body. I'll just be doing like uh, a bust, basically, just a face and a body, because I'm terrible at fucking bodies. And I'm going to do uh, one of my characters. I'm gonna do Rylan. Uh, so basically, what I usually start with on Rylan is I I make sort of like a a circle, then I make a somewhat squarish uh, jaw, not really but close to it. Then I give him a thick neck because he's fucking muscular as shit. And um, I'm gonna give him a little bit of something. I'm fucking terrible at muscles. Let me give him a fucking lower half, but you can't see it, so it doesn't matter. Uh, psh. And here's my terrible skeleton that sucks dick. Uh, now that I have my rough skeleton, I'm going to make my slightly less rough skeleton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer, which I already did. And I'm going to lock this one so it doesn't interfere. And I'm going to do a slighter, darker color. Just a little lighter blue. And I'm going to start drawing what I want them to look like. So I have his goggles, which are kind of like just some squares. And I have his... Now if you notice it's kind of just sketchy and I'm not really connecting the eyes, that's okay, because I don't want to connect the eyes. I don't want to connect any lines, because this, I mean, this is my final lines. This is my... uh my rough sketch and he sort of has a bit of a ball chain at the bottom connected with a kind of looks like a wrestler mask he's wearing with yellow goggles basically and he has fucking boo ears which are just like elastic over bands for his ears and he has a red helmet that's combined with his goggles he's a thick neck And he's muscular as shit, which uh, I'm not that good at drawing. Just fuck it, I'm not even gonna try to. Just fucking arms, I did a horrible job. And there we go. Now I have a little bit of a less, or a little bit of a more rougher sketch. From here, I'm gonna make an even new layer. I'm gonna lock this. But before I lock it, I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to take the alpha down to about 49, so it's invisible. Then I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. And from here, I'm going to lock it at the top, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and make it black, since this is the color I want to use. I'm going to zoom in at 200%. Thank you.
And there we go. There's Rylan. Uh, I didn't really draw his body <laughs> because for reasons that I'm bad. But um, that's all it is. That's all it is to anime. That's how everything comes down. Okay, so let's try something different. Um, the fuck can I draw? Let's draw something from Mario. Let's draw a bullet bill. Yep, that's uh, my bullet bill. I just I don't even know if that's what he looks like. I think he has the white hands. Let's give him a fucking gay sailor tattoo. The fuck do anchors look like? There we go. Sounds like a fucking retarded F. Okay, so we have our bullet bill. I'm gonna go ahead and color it so it's even easier to work with. Okay, so here's our bullet bill. Um, I'm going to convert it into a symbol since we're going to be uh, tweening it. I'm going to go ahead and convert it into a movie clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the bullet bill move across the screen. That's simple enough. Uh, if you guys don't know how to do tweens, they're very easy. So we come up here to our layer. I'm going to go to frame 15. Go ahead and press F6. Then I'm going to right click it. And I'm going to go to create a motion tween. Now I'm going to move my bullet bill, and there we go. So he's moving. Now here's another really cool thing we can do. We can also edit its move by changing its ease. If you want to slow down or speed up, depending on what you have its, its ease set at, is what will happen. So we come down here, and we see our ease is zero. If I make it 100, it will slow down more towards the end. And so you have your normal speed, then it slows down here. Let's say if I come in here and make it uh, negative 100, then it'll do the exact opposite. It'll start slow and speed up. What's also cool about this is, I'm going to go ahead and make this an edit. Uh, if I go to here and I edit the, I edit this, I can manually, if I reset it, this is at 0% currently, the ease is. I can manually come in and edit this. And uh, you'll see what I mean. Uh, Bullet Bill will do this weird fucking bounce thing. Since I made all these weird fucking zigzags, that's what he's going to do. You can also change that if you don't want him to look like he's a fucking schizophrenic bullet. You can put it, uh, just make it a little less bouncy. and make it like some fucking rocky mountains and it'll be a little more smoother but just sort of like delayed a little bit so you can pretty much mess around with the, the ease and edit uh, all you want I'm gonna reset it back to normal and make it a hundred percent so it slows down also what I'm going to do is if it even fucking did it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the rotation to change the rotation, um, you can simply come over here and do clockwise, that's what CW means, or counterclockwise, which is what CCW means. So I'm going to go to clockwise, and he's spinning clockwise, but he slows down since I have the ease on. 
and come back over here and let's make him go counter. Now he's going backwards. Uh, you can also change how many times you want to do. You can synchronize the symbols. I've never tried that. You can snap the guide. Uh, I guess it's doing a guideline, but I'm not too good with those things. And this is a motion tween. There are other tweens, like shape tween is what I'm going to tell you guys in a little bit. Uh, but this is just for like when you for motion. This is when you're tweening. These are for the people that tween because I know not everybody frame by frame. So this is for the people that don't know how to tween, and I hope that helped you. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna draw something since we're gonna do shape tweening. Um, this is all I really know about shape tweening, and it's um so but all we're gonna do is we're gonna make a shape. Uh, Shape tweeting is kind of gay. If anybody knows how to use shape tweeting a lot better than me, go ahead and explain it a lot better than me, and I'll just put you in the, the viewer tips, because I honestly don't know shit about shape tweeting except how to do it with one shape. So if you can do it to more than one, then uh, a more fucking power to you. So basically, I just made a shape. I drew it and everything. Uh, to make sure I have no holes in it, I'm going to press Control-Z about three times. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe to 10, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to create shape tween. This is going to create a green thing. Um, this color, I'm just going to make it into something completely different. To so add that, I'm going to make it this shape. I'm going to make it this color. And yeah, that's as easy as shape tweening is. You can, uh, as easy as I literally just made it, that's how easy it is. If anybody can do anything more than me, uh, please tell me. Another issue people seem to have is this is not how you shape tween, okay? If, uh, this is not a good shape tween. If this happens, this is a bad shape tween. So let's say you draw something, and right now it's fine, but let's say I come over here and I never notice a small smidgen space, this little microscopic spot right there. Yeah, that's gonna fuck up everything. Watch what happens. Well, I guess maybe that won't fuck it up. I guess this be a little bigger. There we go, that should cause some interference. Yeah. Let's say you made a small, uh, small mistake and you, like I did, I came in here and I made a hole and you don't realize that you're going to get this fucking mess and I see a lot of people do this that means you fucked up and you did it wrong okay that's why you always need to check to see all your color is filled in so I'm going to fill in these spaces I'm not having that issue because I filled it in and that's as easy as shape tweening is uh, shape tweening is good for like transformations uh, and stuff like that but I don't really use shape tweening. Um, you're welcome to if you can use it better than me. Shape tweening is also good for like uh, backgrounds, I guess. You can change the color of the background, which is pretty cool. So if I want to come over here, I make this red. This literally changes from blue to red, so that's pretty cool in its own way. Uh, there's a lot you can do with shape tweening in a sense, but I don't really use it. Uh, but you guys are welcome to, and that's what I use. So. And that's about it for uh, this for this week. Uh, next week is going to be a little less of the video time. It's going to be not 15 or 20 fucking minutes long. But it's going to be like 9 or 10 minutes long. Maybe less than that. Because I've pretty much taught you guys all I know. And there's not much left to tell you guys. Uh, just some small stuff and a little bit of uh, hints now. And then I'll tell you guys. But for now, you guys pretty much have cleared me out. I've told you everything I know. And I hope that helped you. There's obviously a little bit of more stuff I can tell you, but just a little bit. And I'm going to do those. Um, so just expect those, and thank you guys for viewing. Glad you guys used my tutorial. What's going on, everybody? It's uh, Spaz Kid with the Sunday Tutorials. I apologize for all these previous Sundays, um, because I haven't been uploading, obviously. And I haven't been making stuff, obviously. But that's mainly because I've been incredibly busy on a really big project that just recently was finished. So now I'm going to be uploading more frequently. I'm going to try and get something out at least every month, maybe maybe two things. It depends how long it is. I, I really plan on working on a big project because I usually like to have one big project and a bunch of little shit in between. That's kind of, that was kind of like the game plan. 
the idea. And I'm getting, I'm, I think I'm going to get Adobe After Effects because, let's fucking face it, it's incredible. Uh, you can do a lot of shit with After Effects, and you can make your animations look pretty fucking awesome. And uh, from what I've seen, I really, really want to get into After Effects, and I also want to get into a little bit of 3D. It's because 3D um, is really cool, and if I had 3D with 2D, that would, I don't know, this is something I want to do in the future. But for now, we're going to do some tutorials, I'm completely getting off topic. But before I start anything, I want to tell you guys that the whole, people ask how to import and export audio, Oni's done tutorials, he's done like two, and he, he tells you how to export audio and how to do all that shit. If you want to learn how to do like the audio exporting and at what quality it should be set at and what you should set stuff at, then go talk to Oni, because he's already done, I mean, go fucking talk to Oni. I mean, look at his video, you don't really need to converse to get an idea. So basically... I'm going to be teaching you guys today how to lip sync, because I do it a different way Oni does. Well, for the most part, Oni still does it sort of the same way, but for, to get, you don't, I'm not talking about swapping symbols, this is going to be frame by frame mouths, but there's a certain way I do it, and it's pretty easy if you can understand easing, which is something I'm going to teach you guys today. Now, I taught you guys how to ease with tweens, but tween easing is not necessarily the best thing. It's more nicer to tween frame by frame wise now I'm gonna make uh, uh, just I'm gonna make a new layer to explain what I mean so I have a ball here and, and you notice I have one frame and then okay before I even begin this I'm gonna answer another question I apologize but I just wanna get a few things out there a lot of people ask what the hell do I mean by animating uh, in two frames this would be animating in one frame and this would be animating in two frames. Normally when I do in between poses or I'm just like, you know, talking or there's just simple animation going on, I work in two frames, which is this. I never work in one because I feel one is incredibly fast. And I've, even though the video uh, export thing I'm using is complete garbage, it, it really, I really think that working in two for mouths and most everything gives it a more fluent, realistic feel which is why I work in two. So anyways, we're gonna, I'm gonna draw a ball and show you guys what I mean by ease. So you notice the ball right here is just slightly done. So I'm gonna insert, I'm gonna press F7 and insert another frame. And then I'm gonna move the ball only slightly, just a, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna insert another frame, same amount, and I'm gonna sorta make the ball like expand a little bit, like you know, it's, uh, it's going a little faster. And now I'm gonna make the ball over here and then I'm gonna make the ball come back over here and then it's gonna slow down again and then slow down wait we apologize we get this right again like that like that That. So basically, I just showed you guys. This is easy. This is what I do. It's really easy, and um, it's really just a matter, basically, of stretching and skewing something. So basically, what easing is is it's um, sort of like a slowdown. Like you start out quick, and then you come to a halt. But that in between animation is the halt, and that would be the easing. So let me give you an example. As I've drawn this, you see I start out, and there's a slight movement, then there's a large movement, then it slows down again. That would be easing. Similar to how, I'm going to give you another example. I could give you the same exact, the same effect with a tween, but it won't look as good because, as you know, tweens don't really change position. So it's the same general idea. Alright, so I drew two examples. I made one frame by frame, which is at the top, and one is tweened. So as I play it, you can see the difference. When you're allowed to draw frame by frame easing, it gives you a bigger advantage to draw, you know, quicker than you normally could tweening. This is the same amount, this is the same length, only you can see that the, tween, the frame by frame one just looks a lot better. I hope I explain that a little bit better because mainly in animation, easing is possibly one of the most important things. Frame by frame easing is just, 
it's a it's the same as tweening only you have a more you're you're able to do more with it so let me give you another example let me draw um because not everything you draw is going to look like a fucking a circle okay sometimes you might draw things that don't look like circles maybe for instance a hand but i'm just kind of trying to draw shit really quickly so and hands are pretty the way I do, they're easy so i'm going to zoom in 150 and I'm going to draw fucking a hand. So here's a hand, and I want the hand to go to here. Or don't ask about the fingers, they were put through a meat grinder. Okay, so we have the hands. Um so now I'm going to show you easing with like you know bottle bodies. It's it's basically the same thing. Like uh, you know you have a slowdown. Notice I put a little slowdown on it, and uh, then I'm going to make a little speed up. This could be qualified as a skeleton because this is terribly horrible looking. And, uh, but this time, I'm going to do something completely different. You see that? You see that? That is a, that's what I call a bounce effect. And in animating, bounce effects are incredibly important for really, really thick and really hard movements. Basically, it, you, when you're doing something really, really hard, like if somebody's punching or somebody's kicking or there's a long thrusted throw or there's any motion that is really violent or quick, you would need a bounce back effect. When you throw your hand out in real life, your hand doesn't automatically stop. You, it's not conjoined. You, you, have, you always have a bounce back effect. I mean, you can try it all you want. You can't automatically stop your hand in a mid throw completely still with no sort of jolt back movement. And that applies to animation too. When somebody throws their hand, there's always a jolt back movement. All right, so now that I taught you guys how to ease and how to do bounce effects, now I'm gonna teach you guys how to animate in between because you guys are probably wondering, wait, what the fuck? How did you get all that in between stuff? So I made two examples and I, I mean, I already had these examples here. I'm just explaining what their purpose is now. There's always a start, there's always a middle, and there's always an end. When animating, before you even start an animation or a storyboard, you want to create, for every single movement, for every single motion, there is pictures in between. Like, there's always the main point. And that's basically all it is, really. See, there's a start, middle, and end. This is obviously, you know, first glance, is a, his, is a hand closing and creating a fist. Now that I have all this drawn out, ugh, now that I can't fucking talk, now that I have all this drawn out, I'm going to animate in between, which is normally what I do. I draw the pictures, and then I animate in between. This is what most people do when they animate. They don't just fucking go along as they go and just, you know, freeball it. They actually have s something. And, I mean, this won't be a final thing. This is basically like a skeleton, because this is pretty roughly done. Um... So now I'm going to animate in between and show you guys what I mean. So like I said, there's going to be a, a I'm going to push a little movement back. So I'm going to do a slight ease back. I could even like sort of close the, the hand, the fingers. It's not necessarily important. Again, it uh, looks terrible, I know, but I'm just trying to give an example out there. All right. So, I drew the example, and it is a hand closing. There's a lot of frames in here, and it, there might even be too much, but this is just for an example of what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to take away that. I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to make it a little quicker, so I'm going to remove some frames. Could even draw this hand back a little bit.
could honestly take this out. Just trying to get a more realistic look. All right, so there we go. Now, all these things that I taught you guys just recently all applies to this one little animation. There's an ease, and there's a bounce effect. Because he's doing it kind of quickly, and if you close your hand really fast, like you can even do, you can even look at this animation and probably perform it yourself, and you'll see that even when you do it, your hand always has a bounce back effect. Most... And it's um, as simple as that. That's all really animation comes down to. So there you go. Now I'm going to teach you guys how to lip sync. And lip syncing is a little more difficult and I'm going to have to start a new slate. So one sec. Alright, so now that we talked about easing and bounce effects, it's time to apply it to lip syncing. Because you do apply all these forms of animation to lip syncing. As strange as that may sound, it's very important. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw the main mouths for what a fucking Sailor Moon is saying. So I'm going to... Alright, so as you can hear, it's sort of like an ah. So, ah. And there's a closed mouth. Still closed. I think I could move it out a little more. And now the mouth is open yet again. And it's closed again. There. So, you you get the basic idea. Like, it's, um, I've drawn all the mouths, and what I'm going to do exactly how we did the last time is after, since I've done all of them, I'm just going to animate in between. So, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to animate all these things in between. So, since it's come to here, I'm going to animate that. So, I'm going to use my onion skinning, and I'm just going to make this mouth medium sized. And I'm going to sort of bring this up a little bit to give more, and I'm going to push it out more because you can see it sort of goes in like this. So I'm going to make it come up and down a little bit. And there's a lot of emphasis on the fun, so I'm going to make the mouth sort of stretched out a little bit. And it's coming up again. Medium size. The mouth will come up again. Close. It's pretty pin primitive animation you might have noticed. This is because this is a fairly old file and I'm actually going back through and re-skeletoning some of the shit. And this is also an upcoming animation if no none of you knew. So it's as simple as that. I mean you can color in the mouths, you can make it look good, and that's really all it is to lip syncing. That's all I do. I mean I I'm not fucking going all out of my way to make it look incredibly good, but I keep all this stuff in mind when I do stuff. Really, in animating, what you should take your most time in is drawing the still pictures of what you're going to be working in between. Because in the long run, nobody's really going to be seeing the in-between shit you do. So even if you got lazy with the anatomy and it wasn't fucking Disney precise nonsense, and like, let's say, you know, fuck it, you just sort of like made something crazy and out of the blue, then, you know, there you go. Look here, I'm going to go back an example. Uh somewhere here no no it's more back here we go I just recently did this over again so I'm gonna play it so you guys can have an example of what I did I'm 
Ultra crystals, a heart shaped crystal, diamond shaped crystal, a four foot shaped crystal. Who cares about how many? Where are you? I still gotta change this head because it looks kind of weird, but. That's basically all I got. I mean, there's not much else I can tell you. I guess in the next tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how I do hair. Because I do hair a certain way uh, when I make body movement. And it's been working for the longest time. And I'll see you guys later.